So these are some example problems uh, on geometrical optics, uh, our last topic. So I just picked uh, some random problems from mostly from the lecture slide. So here's the first problem. Uh, very easy, simple uh, <coughs> problem on uh, law of refraction of light, basically Snell's law. So it says a uh, light ray is incident in a uh, block of glass at an angle 23 degree at what angle does the ray refract you know as it enters the block uh, and the, the the glass block is surrounded by water so here's the question if you want to draw so here's you have a glass block right and and the ray incidents like it could be incident from this side that side we don't we don't know that so here's the incident ray, and uh, so the to measure the incident angle, angle of incidence, you have to draw this imaginary, um, you know, normal to the surface. This is the surface normal, right? This is the normal we call normal, and we measure all the angles, you know, Snell's law, with respect to this normal. So this is we call theta i, the angle of incidence, right? And since this is a glass with higher index of refraction, it's surrounded by water right uh, so then it, it bends towards the normal right because it's, it's going from lower index to higher index of refraction and it's asking what's the angle of refraction in the glass medium so that's what it is asking so theta i is it's incident at 23 degree angle in the water medium and uh, the index of refraction for for uh, you know uh, uh, of water is uh, 1.33 this is from the list uh, you'll be in this of refraction for the glass is 1.5 for standard and then Snell's law simply says just use Snell's law at the boundary right simply says n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2 and uh, this n1 and n2 are the index of refraction and uh, right, so this is uh, median number one this is median number two right so N1 is the N of water, right? Um, this is 1.33. Sine of angle 23 degree, right? N2 is the index of refraction of glass, 1.5. And we're calculating sine of um, theta 2, right? We're calculating the angle of refraction in the glass medium, theta 2. That's what it is action. So it's going to be 1.33 uh, times sine of 23 degree divided by 1.5 is sine theta 2 right and then you can <coughs> so this is going to be 0 0.346 and your theta 2 is going to be inverse sine 0 0.346 and if you do this calculation it's going to be about 20 degree okay so it's going to make about 20 degree with respect to the normal when it enters the glass so here's the next problem. It says uh, when a rectangular metal tank uh, is filled with uh, filled to the top, right, with some unknown liquid. So this is some unknown liquid, you know, uh, whose index of fraction we don't know. And observer, here's the observer. So here's your observer with uh, this is the I, right? Observer uh, O uh, with eyes level with the top tank can just see the corner E. So this, he, this observer uh, will just see this corner right here, right? Because the light from this corner actually goes like this and it bends uh, like this. It, it just makes 90 degree angle. That's what you say. He, uh, this observer can just see the corner because of, because why? Because the light bends at this interface. So this is your interface. This is the normal way. And, <clears throat> and, that's why he, uh, this observer can just see this corner right because of the bending of light and these are the size 1.1 you know, this is 0 0.85 and what is the index of refraction of this unknown liquid so based on that so here since it's your angle of um, incidence let's call theta 1 first you have to find that from the geometry right so uh, tan so i'm just gonna use the tan, the tan theta in this right angle triangle right is going to be 1.1 divided by uh, this right 0 
So third one is then uh, inverse 10, 1.1 divided by 0 0.85, so it's uh, 52.3 degrees, that's what you need. Now this is your angle of incidence, right? This is the angle of incidence. Uh, in the this liquid medium and this is now air outside is air so just use again the Snell's law at the boundary so n1 right so let's call n1 is the index of fraction of the unknown liquid n2 is the index of refraction of the air so n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2 right uh, and n1 is what we're going to solve for uh, so sine of theta 1 is 52 that's the uh, angle of incidence in the uh, liquid medium at this boundary is m2 is the index of, index of fraction of air right and sine of uh, theta 2 is 90 degree right because here in in the air it makes 90 degree angle so angle of refraction in the air is 90 degree. so that gives you n1 is just 1 over sine of 52.3 degree and that's your answer. So the N1 is 1.26. And index of refraction has no unit. Okay, it's just the unit, it's just the number ratio. So there are a couple, um, you know, just uh, conceptual questions. So it says um, a ray of light AB is incident obliquely. Obliquely means it's um, uh, more than zero. Uh, on the surface of glass block, which of the following diagrams represents the refracted ray so here is it's going from the ray of light is going from uh, you know obviously incident on the surface of glass so it's going from air to glass okay on each diagram is going from air to glass right it says which diagram diagrams represent the um, best represents the refracted ray so obviously this one this is your choice right because when it goes from um, a lower index of fraction to a higher index of fraction it bends towards the normal right that's from our Snell's law so go check and my uh, lecture slide uh, towards the normal the ray of light has to bend towards fraction because it's going from water to air so going from higher to lower so when <coughs> when a ray of light goes from higher to lower it has to bend away from the normal okay Away from the normal, so that's why. But for for the fish stalker, it just appears, it just appears because ray for him, it just a ray always travels straight line, just extrapolate backward, it appears. So now, if fish is uh, the stalker from underwater, the opposite will happen. So the, the first of all, pick a uh, uh, incident ray, right? Just pick I. It will go like that, and since now it's going from it's going from air to uh, water, right? Uh, lower to higher index of fraction it has to bend towards the normal right and then for but for fish it just appears to come from here so the fish uh, the, the the stalker actually appears at, apparently the fish stalker uh, appears um, taller than uh, he really is so here's the next problem uh, it has multiple parts um, a ray of light strikes on a flat piece of glass uh, you know glass block um, it, it, from air to glass incident the angle of incidence is 60 degree the thickness of glass is two centimeter this thickness of glass is uh, you know two centimeter and index of glass uh, index of fraction of glass is you know 1.5 um, so th these are multiple questions on the diagram below use ray diagram to show the refracted ray uh, from both the face actually so this is the refracted ray, right? This is the incident ray. This is the refracted ray right here. It bends, right, towards the normal. As you, but uh, uh, again, when it enters the air, right, it has to you know, go go like this. It has to, again, uh, bend, you know, away from normal. And uh, this ray, the, this is called emergent ray. We call emerging ray. It has to be parallel with the in, initial beam, right? It has to be parallel with the initial beam. Okay, and second part is the light ray partially reflects from the surface, right? Because some of the very few, like 10%, 5% light energy will be reflected off the top surface. And when it reflects, right, <clears throat> this is the reflected ray. When it reflects, it has to obey the law of reflection. 
so that's why if this is 60 degree this has to be 60 degree uh, so next find the angle of incidence at which the uh, ray uh, emerges from the glass so it's action the angle of emergence and you can uh, do the calculation right so how do you find the angle of emergence here so to find the angle of emergence first you have to find the angle of refraction and use uh, this angle will be same as so so let's call this is theta one uh, let's call this is theta two right theta two is the angle of refraction and if this is theta two this is also theta two right from geometry and this is let's call theta three so uh, part c is acting in theta three right the angle of emergence uh, let's see so first uh, you need to know theta two so i'm applying first uh, snell's law uh, in the first uh, first boundary uh, n1 sine theta 1 is equal to n2 sine theta 2 so first find theta 2 so n1 over n2 sine theta 1 right is sine theta 2 so n1 is l1 divided by glass is 1.5 uh, sine of 60 degree right is sine theta 2 and then mm, you do this is going to be 0 0.577 and theta 2 is inverse sine 0 0.577 and theta 2 is 35.2 degree okay so this theta 2 now this also theta 2 theta 2 right now at the second boundary at the uh, bottom surface uh, Snell's law again apply uh, on the bottom surface again apply Snell's law so n2 uh, sine theta 2 is equal to n3 sine theta 3 right and solve for theta 3 so what is n3 n3 is again air right right n3 is again air because it emerges back to air so n2 is glass so 1.5 uh, sine of theta 2 is 35.2 degree is n3 is again 1 and sine of theta 3 and you will see you let's see so 1.5 of this is going to be 0 0.865 if you do calculation is sine of theta 3 so theta 3 is sine of uh, inverse 0 0.865 right and theta 3 is exactly 60 degree okay so it makes 60 degree angle again when it emerges <coughs> emerges back to air medium and it makes sense because since this is parallel to the incident original incident ray it has to be you know 60 degree and that makes sense so the next question is next part is part d is find the linear displacement between the emerging ray and the incident ray okay uh, so uh, let me solve it in the next page so we're solving part D. So first let me uh, redraw the picture. So this is a block of glass uh, and the ray of light is incident here at 60 degree angle and it refracts, bends like this and again emerges back to the air, right? And this we just found from last part, uh, last part. This is, uh, we already know this is, uh, uh, you know, 35.2 uh, degree, 32. And theta 3 is 60 degree again right and <clears throat> uh, this is this is the thickness of glass 2 centimeter and um, <clears throat> so first and it's acting this so if you if you produce the initial original ray the dotted line it's just acting this distance this perpendicular this is called lateral shift okay let's call x so x is part d is just acting this lateral shift between the emergent ray and the incident ray uh, it's called in optics it's called lateral uh, shift you know between the emergent ray this is the emerging emergent ray right and the original direction so then you just basically play with the geometry so you you're going to need this distance somehow we call it this this refractive ray as d the length of the refractive ray we call d 
and this d can be found very easily because since we already know that and we know this two centimeter right so here in this right angle triangle you just take the cosine of the three uh, 35 degree 35 of 2 degree right because this angle is becomes a 2 divided by d right base divided by hypotenuse so d is 2 divided by cos 35 degree 35.2 so d is uh, 2.45 centimeter okay that we're going to use later because first you're going to need that now once you have that right uh, then you, you you can find this angle right here and this angle will be uh, this angle will be this whole angle is 60 degree right so 60 minus 35.2 degree right has to be this angle and that's uh, 24.8 degree right and then back to so somehow we have to figure out x so we already know uh, d right and now we we know this angle this angle is 24 degrees so then take sine theta right uh, in this triangle in this triangle so sine 24.8 degree is equal to x over d from it's all from the geometry that's why we call this optics as geometrical optics because all the laws of geometry uh, you know uh, you can use all the laws of geometry here and then x is the lateral shift so d is sine uh, 24.8 degree that's it so d is 2.45 centimeter right keep everything in centimeter in optics actually we keep everything in centimeter because centimeter or millimeter is the base unit practical unit in, in geometrical optics you know so don't don't worry about converting into meters okay now if you do this calculation is 1.03 centimeter <coughs> is the final answer okay so that's the lateral shift it's the shift lateral shift because it's shifted by that much distance from the original uh, original direction now next is part e we still need to do part e it's a long question so let me go back to the question part e is find the time it takes to travel the uh, find the time the light takes to travel the glass slab okay so how much time it takes to travel this distance right this distance. since now we have already calculated this diagonal distance the refractory rate distance d right is a lot easier because uh, we know uh, first you have to find the speed of um, speed of light in glass because the speed of light, light will be different in different media so how do you find that and remember one formula n is c over v c is the speed of light in vacuum and v is the speed of light in the given medium so in this case glass glass medium so the speed of light in glass medium is c over ng right c is the speed of light in vacuum you can find it from the physical constant table uh, 3d table and then it's 1.5 so this that's the speed of light so the speed of light in uh, glass medium has reduced as you can see right and that's obvious and then to find the time because velocity is just distance over t right distance over t is the velocity by definition so then time is d over velocity so d is the diagonal distance the light ha has to travel right which we have already found 2.45 centimeter so 2.45 right and now since the velocity is uh, in meters per second right uh, so it has to be same units so you have to convert now you must convert d into meters negative two because the light speed of light in glass medium is in meters per second that's what so this time is actually 0 0.12 10 to the power negative 9 if you do and you can call it nanosecond right because 10 to the power negative 9 is 9 so that that's the time scale that the light takes actually in, in real life actually it's light only takes nanoseconds of time now next uh, we're going to solve some problems on uh, total internal reflection and critical angle so just uh, just uh, just give you some basic idea first uh, also it's also in my lecture slide so when uh, light rays goes you know strikes from denser to rarer medium higher index of fraction to lower index of fraction right um, if this angle is less than critical angle, if the angle of incidence is less than critical angle 
Uh, so most of the rays, you know, more than 90% of the rays will be refracted as a regular refraction. A very few percentage of light will be reflected here. But uh, at some point, actually, it will just make, right, if you now increase the angle of incidence uh, slowly, uh, the, the angle of the refracted ray will just go through the boundary, through the interface, making angle of incidence 90 degree. And this angle here is called critical angle, right? And now what happens if you increase the angle of incidence here by a little bit uh, so then it will happen this so if this angle of incidence in the denser medium here is now even if slightly big, bigger than critical angle then a hundred percent of the light will be reflected back to the same medium okay and this phenomenon is called total internal reflection it's a very important phenomenon in optics you know and that's the main idea okay that's the main idea we're going to be using so uh, first, <clears throat> so first, uh, uh, do some very easy questions. So it's action. Find the critical angle uh, for the given pair of media. Um, uh, you know, for two examples. You know, the critical angle for a given pair of media is constant. So it depends on the um, pair of media. So calculate the critical angle for water, air surface, and glass water surface. So I'm gonna solve uh, this. Uh, let's say for glass water so you have two media right so you have glass and you have water right and remember uh, when in order to see the total internal reflection phenomenon light has to go from uh, higher to lower index of refraction right you won't see that total internal reflection when light goes from uh, stacks from lower to higher index of refraction. so we are finding the critical angle so how do you define the Critical angle. So critical angle is the angle in, in the denser medium, right? Uh, when the refracted ray just passes through the interface from the boundary, making angle of incidence 90 degree. So angle of ref, uh, refraction is 90 degree, and your angle of incidence is uh, we call critical angle. So we are finding the critical ang critical angle for glass water interface. So just use Snell's law again. Just simply use Snell's law. Or directly use the formula there's a formula given but this is critical angle so n1 sin theta 1 is equal to n2 sin theta 2 right so your n1 is this n2 is water right and then n1 is glass right <coughs> so glass is 1.5 if it doesn't say type of glass theta 1 is theta c right now replace theta 1 by theta c that's what we're going to find n2 is now water water is 1.5 Two three on sign of now ninety degree. That's how we define critical angle. So then critical angle uh, sine theta c one point three three divided by one point five, right? And theta c is uh, sine inverse one point three three divided by one point five. And <clears throat> that's your uh, if you do that. So the critical angle for this system for glass water. Uh, is 62.5 degree right and similarly you can try for water air interface so here's an example that has to do with the total internal reflection you know phenomenon so any diver or any um, aquatic animals um, you know underwater will see the upper sky you know uh, through a hole actually uh, with certain diameter depending on the depth. So this is a problem. A catfish is two meter below, right? This is two meter below. The fish is right here um, Two meter below the surface of a smooth lake. What is the diameter of the circle right on the surface through which the fish can see the world outside the water, right? And this is limited by the critical angle and this all this uh, the fish will see the outside world only through this diameter right through this hole everything else this and that you know it's just the mirror surface right it's just reflecting uh, it looks mirror surface can't see through this so this is the only damage so then it is limited by critical angle right because this is limited by critical angle see from the principle of reversibility right so this is the maximum angle it can uh, the uh, vision right so theta c and this is theta c and theta c this is water right and this is air 
for air and water system uh, first find the critical angle uh, so critical angle how do you find the critical angle so you can directly use the formula so inverse sine um, in the numerator is uh, it's always the rarer the small index of value air has one and water has 1.33 so that's the index of refraction that's the critical angle uh, for um, air and water system so for 48.8 degree so that's theta c right and then once you have theta c this theta c is equal to this angle right and this is two meters so then you can right away you can find r which is the radius of the hole and then uh, so tan theta c is what uh, tan theta c is r divided by um, 2 right so r is 2 tan theta c is 2 tan of 48.8 degree right and r is 2.28 meters so, so the, the diameter of the hole through which uh, the fish can see the outside world is just two times the radius right 4.6 meter so uh, this hole the size of the hole is 4.6 meter and second question is just conceptual so if the fish descends right goes to more depth descends or does the diameter of the circle increase decrease or remain the same so then go back uh, to this formula so from the diameter is um, just proportional to radius right is uh, see here uh, depth because from this depth right two meter is the depth right of tan of theta c you can clearly see right these are proportional i mean if you if you go more depth right more deep um, then the radius will go up right and then the diameter will go up okay so here's the next conceptual part question uh, a light ray AB passes from glass to air so it's going from higher index to lower index of refraction right at an angle 45 degrees with the normal so here all the on all these pictures you know the light ray is striking from glass to air right um, which of the following diagrams represents the refracted ray so this 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 right so uh, remember when light goes from a higher to lower index of refraction uh, it, it has to bend away from the normal right so there are only two choice actually this right this uh, three choice actually because it, it, it could go from through the interface if this is critical angle like if this is critical angle right um, uh, then it, it, it may go from here or it may suffer total in this is the total internal reflection so it, to find that you have to check the angle of incidence here so angle of incidence right angle of incidence is given it is striking at 45 degree angle right and then compare with remember compare with the critical angle of the system right so what's the critical angle for the of the system it's a glacier system so for glacier system critical angle is just use um, direct formula so 1 over 1.5 right uh, the index of fraction of air divided by index of fraction of glass so glacier uh, the index of fraction is uh, for, so if you do that 42 degree right so you can clearly see uh, theta i which is index uh, which is the angle of incidence right given 45 degree is greater than critical angle and if you go back and check the condition if the angle of incidence is greater than critical angle it suffers you know it goes uh, it suffers um, total internal reflection it suffers total internal reflection right so this is the right angle so answer is e e is the right answer here's the next uh, question so it says you have a block of glass right uh, and it's surrounded by air and a uh, ray of light or laser beam strikes on the bottom surface right and uh, uh, so the first question is uh, what is the time the light takes to travel uh, within the glass slab so that's the first question and that's really easy because um, speed is uh, what is the speed speed of light is the distance traveled divided by time so somehow we need to figure out this diagonal distance 
and we also need to find out the speed of light in glass so you can find the speed of light in glass by using this formula c over v right so v will be c over index of fraction of glass and it turns out uh, the speed of light in glass will be slow down right obviously so 2 tens to the power 8 uh, 3 tens to the power 8 is the maximum this is the speed of light in vacuum so once you find that your next job is to somehow figure out this diagonal path light has traveled within the glass to find that out first you need this angle of refraction and how do you find this uh, angle of refraction Snell's law right just use Snell's law right on this interface and then find theta 2 right so once you have theta 2 then this thickness of the glass which is 50 centimeter is given then you can just take the cos theta here in this right angle triangle so if you take the cos theta then you can solve for the diagonal path right so which turns out uh, 0.613 meter and then using the speed of light in glass is the distance travel by the light divided by the time taken and then you solve for the time and time is distance travel divided by the speed of light and it turns out 3.07 nanoseconds and that's a particular typical uh, time for light actually in real life actually uh, uh, because it takes light takes only nanoseconds of time here's the next part of the same problem now it says uh, for the same problem, right, it says from which side of the block, uh, glass block, will the ray emerge? So it can do two things. It can emerge from the top surface, right, or uh, or it it can actually reflect uh, total, uh, it can do total internal reflection, right, and then it can emerge from the right hand side, right. It can do two things. So we need to prove that actually. So the main idea is if the angle of incidence on the top surface right which is let's call theta 2 right which is same as this right if this angle of incidence on this interface is uh, less than the ang less than the critical angle of the system glacier system then it will just do regular refraction right it will follow path number one but however if this angle of incidence is uh, greater than the critical angle of the system then it suffers a total internal reflection and then it will follow path number two so that's what we need to prove so we have already found theta 2 from part a which is uh, which is 35.3 degree right and this is same as this theta 2 is just the angle of incidence on the top surface 35.3 degree right what's the critical angle of the system glacier system so it's inverse sine 1 over this right 48 41.8 so obviously the angle of incidence here uh, is less than the critical angle of the system right so then it will follow path number one okay the ray will be a majority of the light energy will just uh, refract from the top surface and then if it refracts from the top surface what will be the angle of emergence so then the angle of emergence will just, just apply Snell's law again right Snell's law on the top surface and then it turns out exactly 60 degree and that makes sense because because it again passes through the air so this array and this ray must be parallel so that, that that means it should make 60 degree angle and that's what we have proven here so here's the next question uh, so it says uh, light is incident on an equilateral glass prism right uh, at an angle of incidence 30 degree this is the angle of incidence with respect to normal light and it says where does the light emerge so just like before uh, so light may emerge from uh, the other side right uh, as a regular refraction or um, depending on the condition it may just uh, do total internal reflection from this side and it may emerge from the bottom surface right bottom plane so it can do two things so which you uh, we will have to prove actually so right now is glass is surrounded by this uh, prism glass prism is surrounded by air so then first your job is to figure out what's what would be the angle of incidence when it strikes the other surface right uh, we have to figure out uh, this angle of incidence somehow this is the angle of incidence on the other side if this angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle of, of the system glass and air system then it will uh, you know do total internal reflection right uh, and emerge from this side and if this angle is less than uh, the critical angle of the system it will emerge from this side so then we'll we will need to prove that actually so first you have to play with the geometry 
So first, what is this angle? So let's find this angle, let's say theta 2. So I'm just going to use Snell's law, right? So N of air uh, sine of 30 degree is, this is glass, N of glass sine of theta 2. So we're finding theta 2. So 1 times sine of theta, uh, sine 30 divided by 1.5 is sine of theta 2. And theta 2 is going to be what? Theta 2 is, so if you do this calculation, uh, theta 2 uh, is going to be uh, 16 point 16.1 degree if you do that right so then what would be this angle then because this is 60 degree right because somehow we have to figure out this angle so play with the geometry so if this is 60 degree 16 degree right uh, this is 90 degree now right so this whole thing is um, 180 degree. So this angle is 180 degree, uh, 180 degree minus 90 plus 16.5, right? This angle is 180 minus uh, 90 plus this. So it's gonna give you 74 degree, right? And what would be this angle then? This angle will be, uh, this is 60, this is 74, uh, then this will be 180 minus, right? Uh, 60 plus 74 degree. So that's going to get you uh, 46 degree, right? If this is 46, then what will be this angle? So this angle right here will be 90 minus 46, uh, then we, which is uh, 44 degree, right? Okay. So the angle of incidence on the other side of the glass prism um, turns out 44 degree. And let's check the critical angle of the system, which is glass and air system, right? So the critical angle for glass and air system is inverse sine, index of fraction of air divided by index of refraction of glass. And so we already know that is 41.8 degree. So angle of incidence, right? The angle of incidence, right? Right here. Uh, uh, on the other interface, which is 44 degree is greater than the critical angle of the system, right, which is 41.8 degree. Then the ray will do, ray suffers total internal reflection, TIR, right? And then it will then do this, right? It will completely reflects back into internally, right? And then again, here, if you do, uh, and then it will finally emerge from the bottom surface. So you have to figure out this angle again with the normal. If it emerges from the bottom surface, right? Then what would be the angle of emergence? So let's call, let's find that out. So again, uh, play with the geometry. This is 45, right? If it reflects, it has to be 44. If this is 44, angle of reflection, this is also 44, right? From laws of reflection. So, and then this angle will be what? Uh, this angle will be 46, right? Which has to be same as this. This is 60 degree, we know. And then uh, this angle will be, uh, with the triangle, this angle will be uh, 74 degree, right? Then this angle will be what? This angle will be, which is the angle of incidence on the bottom surface, is 16 degree, right? So on the bottom surface, right, we again use Snell's law. So N1, which is N glass, right, sine of 16 degree, because that's the angle of incidence on the bottom, is equal to N of air sine of, let's say, theta emergence, right? So we want to find this angle. So then 1.5 times sine of 60, 16 degree is one sine of theta E and solve for theta E, which is the angle of emergence, right? And that angle is, if you do that, is um, 24.4 degree. So our conclusion is the, in this particular case, our conclusion is the ray of light, right? Or let's say laser beam will uh, emerge from the bottom surface of the this triangle glass prism at an angle of 24 degree 24.4 degree 
Now, this is the second part of the same problem. Now, uh, still angle of incidence is 30 degree. Now, repeat the same thing, right? Where does uh, this um, light emerge, right? If uh, this should be water. If the whole thing, right, if the glass prism is surrounded by water, okay, okay, where does it emerge? Again, it can do two things, right? It can emerge from this surface, right? Uh, and it could emerge from the bottom surface. So we need to prove that. So again, we uh, need to do uh, same thing. We have to first find out uh, when we need to check what's the angle of incidence here. If this angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle of the system, now critical angle has also changed because it's surrounded by water. If this angle of incidence is greater than the critical angle of the system, it will emerge from the bottom surface, right? And if this is, however, less than critical angle, then it will emerge from that surface. So we need to figure that out. So first, again, your job is to figure out this theta 2, right? Everything will change now. So using um, the Snell's law on this surface, so this is water now, right? N of water sine of 30 degree is equal to N of uh, glass, right? And sine of theta 2, we're finding the theta 2. So 1.33 is the index of refraction of water sine 30 degree divided by glass index of refraction of one by sine of theta 2. So find theta 2. So theta 2 will be <coughs> 26.3 degree. So this is 20 26.3 degree. So this is 90 degree, right? And this then this will be 180 my 180 degree minus 90 plus 26.3. So from geometry this will be 63.7 degree and this is 60 degree because it's equilateral triangle and then this will be 9 uh, 180 minus this plus this so this will be uh, 56.3 degree right so that's why this angle right here will be uh, well, what would be the angle so 90 minus 56.3 right so it's uh, 33.7 degree so now this is the angle of incidence on the, this interface right now we need to check this compare this angle of incidence with the critical angle of the system so what, what would be the critical angle of the system so the new critical angle of the system will be again same formula uh, inverse sine so index of fraction of water which is 1.33 divided by index of fraction of glass 1.5 make sure you always have red or medium on the top so that's going to give you uh, the crit new critical angle as 62 much larger right than before so the angle of incidence is only 33.7 degree. The critical angle of the system is 62 point. So angle of incidence is less than, uh, let's uh, call it theta 3, right? Is less than the critical angle of the system, right? So then that's why it doesn't do total internal reflection. It, it will refract, it will refract this way. So the light will emerge from the uh, right hand side, right? Like this. So then what will be the angle of emergence? If it emerges from like this, what would be the angle of emergence? We have, we have to figure that out. So that's our sense. First, you need to conclude that since the angle of incidence theta 3 is less than the critical angle of the system, uh, it uh, will emerge, right, or refract from the right side of the prism, right? Then what would be the angle of uh, emergence? Then again, you apply uh, the Snell's law on the this boundary. So Snell's law, right, on this second side will be uh, this sine of theta three is right, uh, n of water. This is because this is water now uh, of sine of theta e angle of emergence. So 1.5 sine of theta three is what uh, 20 no 33. 0.7 degree right is 1.33 sine of theta e right so theta e is then uh, inverse sine this whole thing 1.5 sine of 33.7 degree divided by 1.33 so if you do that so angle of emergence will be 39 degree so in second case right when the whole glass prism is surrounded by water uh, the light ray or laser beam will emerge from the second uh, the other side actually right side of the glass prism It will not do uh, total internal reflection. There will be some 5% uh, of light will be reflected still like this right for only 5% but majority of the light will be refracted immerse from this side. Okay, that's how you solve this type of problem